All right, I'm not really going to cover 10-6 just like I'm, I didn't really cover 9-5 either because you already know how to do all these tests. So I just want to talk about um, the main concept behind this, which is how do you choose which one. And they have this flow chart for you on page 5267, and that's what you want to look at. So you want to ask yourself, what parameter is addressed in the hypothesis? Are you working with proportions? Because if that's true, then you're doing a one prop Z test right, for proportions. Is it for sigma or sigma squared, i.e. standard deviation or variance? Because then you're doing the chi-square tests from section 10.5. Or is it for the mean? Are you looking, um, asking questions about the average mean? If that's the case, then those are the hardest to figure because then you have to say to yourself, do I know sigma? If I know sigma, then I'm doing a z-test from section 10.2. But if I don't know sigma, then I'm doing 10.3. So let's go through and look at some of the questions um, in the homework and see if that'll help. Okay, so let's look at this one. A simple random sample of size n equals 14 is drawn from a population that is normally distributed. Sigma is 20. Sample mean test. All right, see this? Test whether the population mean is less than. Okay, so they're asking about the mean. Sigma is given in the problem. Therefore, you would do a z test, something from 10 to. Let's go look at some more of them. Um, number five, let's look at five. I see n is 200. Ah, look at this. Of the 200 surveyed, 115 responded. That's proportions. When they're telling you you've got this many people called or surveyed or polled, and this many said that they do X, Y, or Z, that's proportion testing. That's 10-4, um, right? 10-4 proportions. The one with the P hat and all that. Let's look at number seven n equals 15, drawn sample mean, oh, we're talking about means here, sample mean is found to be this, sample sample standard deviation is 6.3. They're not giving you sigma, they're giving you s, therefore that's a 10.3, it's a t-test, right? You're testing the mean, sigma's unknown, so you would do the t-distribution thing with the t-interval, and the, or excuse me, with the t-test and all of that. Number nine, Sam, okay, Sample variance is found to be this. Test whether the population variance, testing population variance, that's a chi-square question that they're asking you there. Right, they're asking you to test the variance on that one. Um, 11, which is a little bit different, by the way, than testing the standard deviation. We did standard deviation here. Um, it would, it would kind of work out the same way. You just have to find the variance and do the same kind of number crunching. Um, let's see. That was that one. Um, 11, sample n equals 40. The mean, sample mean, there's x bar right there. Sample standard deviation is this. That must mean a t-test. So you're doing 10-3, a t-test for this one. Right? Um, by the way, um, is the population mean greater than? That's a right-tailed test. Right? Up here, test whether the population variance is greater than. That's a right-tailed test as well. Um, let's look at number 13. Um, IQs. Okay, so let's see. A psychologist obtains a random sample of 20 mothers. The mothers are asked to play Mozart in their home, blah, blah, blah. We know that IQs are normally distributed. Ah, we know that they're normally distributed with the mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. They're assuming, right, that the the all IQ scores have a standard deviation of 15. That's a sigma that they're giving you. So if the IQs of the 20 children in the study result in a sample mean of 104.2, this is a Z test, right? It's a little bit hidden, but they're giving you sigma, right? Because it's for all IQs for all people. Okay, so this is a Z test again. Right? So that's the kind of thing you want to do. You want to look at the question, figure out what they give you and what they're asking you about. If they're giving you sigma in the problem, it's probably a Z test or a chi-square test, right? So ask yourself, are they asking you to test the average like they are in this case, or are they asking you to test the variance like they were above in the other problem, right? So those are the kind of questions you want to ask yourself. But other than that, the actual Excel work would be identical to everything we did in the other sections. The tricky part is just figuring out which one you have to do. And that would also be the tricky part on a test, figuring out which one you have to do when. All right, we're all done with Chapter 10, so I hope you've enjoyed the videos, and I hope they were helpful. See you, bye.